Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending April 30th, 2021. I'm Brian Yadow, and I'm joined today by Russell Investments Chief Investment Strategist, Eric Ristovin. Eric, it's a pleasure to have you this morning. Thank you. Good morning, Brian. So we have some key economic data points that came out this week to discuss. Uh, we'll also cover an update on the U.S. Federal Reserve's outlook following their meeting this week. And then we'll wrap up with an update on corporate earnings. So uh, let's start with the economic picture here in the U.S. The big data point was first quarter GDP, which came in at 6.4%, which is a nice positive number. Uh, but let's let's dig in beyond the headline number. Uh, what were the key takeaways from the underlying data? Yeah, I mean, the key takeaway is we, we got what we wanted and what we expected. It was a really strong number, 6.4%. Um, is a meaningful increase in economic activity. And, 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 and it was fueled by where we thought it was going to be fueled, which was personal consumption expenditures, right? You and me live in our daily lives. Uh, and it was kind of across the board. We, we bought durable goods like cars and parts. We bought non-durable goods like food and beverages. Uh, and we bought services and accommodations. Uh, yeah, I think Paul Eidelman in one of the earlier videos this year said 87% of Americans have travel plans booked within the next six months. And I think some of those travel plans may be actually being implemented. So, you know, and, and again, this is really good, right? Because if you follow the the, the track from the, the kind of November 9th, when the Pfizer BioNTech announcement came out, there's a lot of hope, right? That the vaccine would eventually lead to a more open economy, which would lead to greater uh, economic activity. Um, then, then, then there was another stimulus package in December. Yet another one um, in early part in the first in the first quarter, uh, and that that stimulus then added actually even more money to the stockpile of cash that we as consumers have. There's about two trillion dollars incrementally more in in kind of cash holdings now than there were a year ago. So you know we we the economy is beginning to improve. And, and we've got a stockpile of cash and we're frankly itching to spend it. Um, so we, we saw what we thought we saw, which is consumers, as soon as they think it's based, you know, getting safer to go back in the water, they started to spend. Um, and and that, that really is a, a positive news because it, it really what it does is, and we saw some of that in the, in the kind of the concurrent contemporaneous data in the first quarter, right? We talked uh, in, in a previous uh, discussion around the PMI's purchasing manager indexes in March, uh, you know, that, that number in the U.S. was higher than it's been in a very long time. Um, and so we were hope we were expecting to see actual spending. So it went from hope to preliminary data that confirmed that hope was in no place to actually seeing it in the data data, which is, you know, confirmation for the, for the market. Market didn't move a lot on the number because it got what it expected. Now, now, sticking to the uh, moving to the policy side, earlier this week, the U.S. Federal Reserve met to vote on central bank policies. Were there any outcomes from the meeting that stood out to you? Again, market got what it expected. Uh, it, it, you know, really, what it confirmed is a number of things. One, the Fed agrees it sees stronger day. It sees a stronger economy. Uh, it, it also it also noted inflation is higher. Um, and, and then, but then it kind of went into a discussion of the fact that there still are dislocations in the economy. And, and you know, they talked about the, the, there has been a lot of recovery, but we're far from fully recovered. And that recovery is, has been uneven, right? Even though we've see, seen services, things like restaurants and hotels have a better quarter in the first quarter, they're still not back to full strength anywhere near full strength. So they think that continued stimulative policy, continued support of the policy is in order. And a lot of that is, I think you remember, and I've talked about this before in these, in these, in these chats that, you know, you think about the dual mandate of the Fed, it's, it's inflation and they don't think inflation's a problem right now. Um, and it's about full employment if inflation's okay. And, you know, an unemployment rate in the United States is running at 6%. That's been much, much, much better than it was in, 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 in May of in April and May of last year, but it's still you know two and a half percent higher than we were in January of 2020. They're going to try to continue to actually improve employment conditions so that number can come down and we can get closer and closer to full employment. Well, let's talk a little bit more in detail about the inflation topic. Yeah. Uh, accelerating inflation has been a topic that's come up in my own conversations with uh, U.S. money managers. So. Um, from your perspective, how, how should investors be thinking or watching uh, inflation uh, going yeah. forward? 
Well, they should be watching it um, because massive amounts of stimulus and really strong economic growth usually end up eventually leading into inflation, resulting in inflation. But but you kind of got to eat through. Generally, you have to eat through that slack in the economy. And one of those big portions of economic slack is unemployment. Right. So um, so the reality is, is right now, this month in March, the numbers were hot. It was you know well over 2.6 percent in terms of price increases uh, on a year on year basis. But you got to remember um, when you're doing a calculation of growth, it's this year's number divided by last year's number. And let's just simply say prices were at a really high level in March of 2020. Um, same is true for April. Same is true for May. So when you, we're going to see um, we're going to see the inflation rate run hotter than normal for the next several months, not necessarily because there's tremendous pricing pressure right now in the economy. More, it's it's what we call basis risk, which means you're just dividing a more normal number by a really abnormally low number, and that results mm. in a high result. So it. it that, and I think that's I think the Fed, they're not coming out and saying that because it could be something else. Right. They're, they very rarely say anything with certainty, with certitude and, and, and in fact. But I think they're thinking that's what we're seeing right now. And they just don't think inflationary pressure is going to continue because they think there's a lot of economic slack out there. Now, having said that, although 2021 inflation is probably not going to be a 2021 problem, it, it can very well be a problem in the not too distant future. So let's shift gears outside of the U.S. Uh, last week, we covered the state of U.S. earnings, uh, which has been a fairly strong story. What themes are playing outside of the U.S. in terms of corporate earnings? Uh, we actually saw a GDP announcement out of Europe, Europe right uh, this morning, and it, and it wasn't, you know, it was negative. The European area economy contracted by 0.6 percent last quarter, which, which sounds like, boy, that should be horrible for earnings. Well, the earnings reports that we're seeing on a year-on-year -year basis um, are running at about 40, a little less than half of the companies are reported. So it's still, it's not really early days, it's mid-days. Um, and 41% uh, year-on-year earnings growth out of Europe. Um, yeah, even though we did see weak economic data in the first quarter, due to the lockdowns, by the way, to, to contain the virus, I think probably people knew that, but that's really was the principal cause of it. Um, we did see some momentum in the back in the back part of uh, in March. We saw both the services PMIs improve in March, and we saw the manufacturing number uh, coming out of Europe at the end of March at the highest with the greatest improvement it's ever shown in the index. So um, you know, and, and Europe is an export based economy. So if we grow and other parts of the world grow really strongly, European manufacturing generally um, benefits from that. And those numbers take, may take a little while to, sh to kind of get into the GDP numbers. But the 41% the year-on-year earnings growth is, is, is good. <laughs> that's, just, that's good. Um, and they're running at about 75% of the companies are beating their estimates of growth, of, of earnings growth. 66% of them, which is lower number, but actually that's a really high uh, revenue beat. So, there, you know, 66% of the companies are beating on the top line revenue numbers. So, you know, and that, that's a little bit better in some categories than the U.S. and a little bit worse in other categories. But in both cases, earnings, you're seeing a very dramatic earnings recovery from where we were a, a year ago. Um, and, and that really, it, it, I think, is why you're, you're not seeing a tremendous amount of weakness, um, you know, in, in European stocks. Uh, uh, you know, and they didn't, they didn't, by the way, economically, they didn't fall as far as we did in, the, in, in last year's recession. So uh, I think it's kind of on track. Europe's behind. They are um, in terms of the vaccination effort, which means they're probably behind in terms of their economy fully opening. Um, but the numbers are tracking in a very similar fashion. And I don't think there's anything really of, that's giving people pause in those, in those numbers. Great. Well, that's all the time we have for today, Eric. But as always, we appreciate your insights. Thank you. And to our listeners and viewers, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Market Week in Review. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.